That's the bit east. That's the one we serve. Uh, I can give two shits about it. I just had a hot dog. M. Night Shyamalan Split. I'm not gonna lie, his last movie, The Visit, was better, but this is still a movie that's worth checking out. It's great to see M. Night Shyamalan really look at what made his movies terrible and step away from that, if not completely, and at the same time still keep the, the weird and quirky stuff that actually made his movies unintentionally hilarious. This movie's story revolves around three young girls who get kidnapped by a man named Kevin who's holding them up in a mysterious facility, but something about Kevin isn't right. What isn't right about him? It's what they've pretty much shown in the movie trailers, the poster and everything. Kevin has split personality disorder, and the personalities are planning to sacrifice the girls to a new one that's going to emerge soon called The Beast. Now, the actor they got to play Kevin, James McCavey, oh, he is the best thing about this movie. Like, he is a talented actor. He genuinely brings the different personalities out as different people. They feel like different characters rather than just throwaways. From Hedwig, who genuinely comes off as an adorable young boy, Dennis, who's a neat freak with some... Eh, pretty unscrupulous desires, and Miss Patricia, who's kind of controlling. However, the other actors, they're a bit of a mixed bag, but the worst is the protagonist, who... she's just written badly, okay? The actress herself isn't god-awful, but the material she's given with, with her character just being, well, flat? It's not that great, to be honest. Now, the movie is dripping with suspense, and I love how the climax actually reminds me of Alien, but it does have pacing issues. See, with how it's set up, it's constantly trying to be suspenseful, and it can't really succeed in that regard. If your movie's gonna try to go for one pace consistently throughout its entirety, it's gonna get dull in some points, and people are gonna get disinterested. Hell, there were a few moments where I was genuinely disinterested because it kept trying to be suspenseful, when it clearly wasn't. And the climax, while it does feel like Alien, there are times where it feels more like Alien Resurrection, just really hokey. Especially when an element of the main character, I think her name was Kirsty, is brought up. Yeah, it turns out the protagonist, the reason why she's so flat is because she's a victim of domestic abuse at the hands of her uncle, spoiler warning. And when the Beast sees this, he sees her as like him and talks about how the meek will inherit the earth and lets her go. It's so contrived and that being the reason why the protagonist was so reserved, just comes off as token. Hell, it even ties into these flashback sections that are so different in tone and cinematography that they feel like a complete part of a completely different movie and disconnected from the larger plot, more so when you take the ending into consideration. And of course, this is an M. Night Shyamalan film, so there's some really awkward camera work and some pretty hokey dialogue. If you're familiar with his work, one of his biggest tropes is to have characters constantly stare directly into the camera and act incredibly serious. If you've seen a ton of his movies, this trope will still get on your nerves, but there are some cases where it does actually add to the unsettling nature of what's going on with Kevin. And the dialogue... <laughs> okay. Chum One is a bit of an unintended comedian with, his di with the dialogue that he writes, because there are times where it is just... Yeah, what the hell, but there are other times where it's just flat-out hilarious. <laughs> Like the Hedwig character, uh, the Hedwig personality, for instance, he has the best lines in the movie and even the best moments. I mean, when he's introduced, what's one of the first things he says after explaining who he is? I just ate a hot dog. <laughs> oh man, the entire theater erupted into laughter at that line. Like, no joke. Intentional or not, it feels like Shyamalan really did pick up on the fact people like to laugh at his films, so he intentional, so he put some dialogue in there either subconsciously or unconsciously, to make people laugh, and it works. <laughs> it works. Okay, Split is not the shining jewel that everyone's making it out to be. It's an alright movie. I wouldn't say it's worth seeing, but if you are curious, yeah, go ahead and see it. There is some good stuff here. Just keep in mind, when you go into this, the last film Shaman made before it, in collaboration with Bloomhouse, was much, much better. That movie was The Visit, and I would recommend checking that out before seeing Split. But Split itself, yeah, if you're curious, go give it a look. 
Slip and sweet, got this review out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you really like this video, then have out your like, favorite, and subscribe. And let me tell you, it was freaking great to see Shamwan go back to being good. Sure, this movie wasn't perfect, but hell, at least it was better than The Happening. That's the least you can ask for from the guy. <laughs> anyway, up next, it's gonna be a review of Resident Evil The Final Chapter. Here's a spoiler. Yeah, it's bad. Anyway, got all that more coming up, so stick around.